Ann from the Connors Elementary School, the 21st Century After School Program. Today we're looking at another continent. Today's continent is the coldest place on this planet. Can you guess what it is? Antarctica. Here we go. I'm going to give you 10 questions. And would you keep track of the questions uh, that you answer correctly? And then if you want to, you can send me how many you got right. I would love to know. Okay? So, let's get started. Could you imagine living in the coldest place on Earth? What do you think the average temperature is? Average temperature is minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit. But the coldest day of the year was minus 128.5 Fahrenheit. Second question. Do you think Antarctica has reptiles? Reptiles are in every continent except Antarctica. Why? It's too cold. Three, is there a waterfall in Antarctica that runs the color red? There's a five-story blood red waterfall that pours very slowly out of Taylor Glacier in Antarctica's Mercado Valley the red comes from iron. Four, how many ATM machines does Antarctica have? The only place you can withdraw cash in an ATM in Antarctica is McCurdo Station, the largest science station in Antarctica. Number five, what country has a town in Antarctica? Chile. The town is Las Estrellas. It has a school, a hospital, a post office, an internet, company, hostel, TV, and mobile coverage. There are 14 homes there. Number six, do fish live under Antarctica? Beneath 740 meters of water in a 10 meter deep section of water lives translucent fish. Scientists don't know how they manage to sustain themselves there, but they live there. Seven, do animals live in Antarctica? No polar bears, but one species of walrus, one species of seal, one species of whale, besides two species of penguins. Number eight, has ice melting caused a shift in gravity in the region? Around 2009, multiple glaciers started suddenly to shed ice into the ocean at 55 trillion liters of water each year. The ice loss is so large, it causes small changes in the gravity field and is tracked by satellite. Number nine, how many lakes are beneath the Arctic ice? Antarctic ice. 300 subglacial lakes are kept from freezing by the warmth of the Earth's core. And the last one is, is there an active volcano in Antarctica? Yes, Mount Erebus. The summit contains a persistent lava lake, one of the five long-lasting lava lakes on Earth. Hope you did well. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Okay, so today we are going to paint penguins. What we're going to need for supplies, we're going to need paint, and these are the colors that you need. Yellow, light blue, black, tan, orange, you may need a toothpick, paper, your plastic, gar plastic grocery bag, water, two paint brushes. One has a very thin, one is very thin with a point, and the other one is a little bit bigger than that. We don't need big ones for this, and we need a plate to put our paint. Hi! This is the painting we're going to do, and it's kind of an interesting painting. It's got writing down here. I just thought it was the cutest thing. Look at the painting quickly. What we're going to do is we're going to paint the heads of all the penguins, and they're black. Um, and we'll go from there. First thing I want to really show you is to take your small paintbrush, dip it into the water, and I've already got my black paint out, and we're dipping it into the water, and if, if Rick, can you get a close shot of this in a minute? <clears throat> and I'm just taking the paintbrush, I'm rolling it, and I'm pulling it. Taking my paintbrush, and I've got a little bit of the water, and I'm pulling it and rolling it. And you can see that I have a nice 
point on this and that's what we need to do this okay again I'm going to pull it and I'm going to come and I'm going to do the faces of these penguins the heads of the penguins now I'm really not touching the lines the black line the outline the black line I'm just painting and again I roll it a bit and I come back in I don't want too much paint on my brush I know I'm going to go outside the lines so I'm painting and I'm not going out on the all the penguins have fur that are sticking out. I'm not doing those. I do those last. Okay? So I'm, st I'm just going to do the head, and I'll do that right now so that you can see what I mean. When you're doing that, there is a black line there. And that line means that there is a nose there. So you need to draw the nose and go around that nose. So... Once you finish outlining the, the black head, you're going to take a little bit more. This time, roll your brush, and this time, you're going to move your painting. Whenever I paint, I move my painting so that my hand and my arm doesn't get into the paint and ruin my painting. Okay? Because we're using acrylic paints, and they don't come out. Okay? So, I'm moving this so I can do these pieces of fur here. So I'm going to go like this and I'm always going to pull it out so that when I'm pulling it out I can lift my brush and I get a really good point. One there and one there. And that's all I can do. That's how much paint I had on my brush. That's it. I don't think I can get any more either. There we go. Okay? So this is what I did. These three black pieces of fur. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go around up here and do the same thing and the same thing over here okay then we can paint the rest and we're going to do the same thing on each of those uh, the penguins heads okay so <clears throat> the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your bigger brush you're going to put it in the black and you're going to paint the penguins all right now while the paint down here is drying you're going to go back to your small brush and you're going to take some orange and some yellow. And again, remember, I make mine so that it's inky. Because right now, if you see that orange, it's pretty thick. And when you, if you don't add water to that, what happens is, is it globs up your painting. So you want to add water every time you use acrylic paints. And again, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go back to your little brush. I'm going to go into my orange first. And I'm going to pull and roll. Pull and roll. Pull and roll. And see my lines? See, I'm doing the lines with two points. Okay? If you can see that. So now I'm going to take this. Now, in my painting, you'll notice I have orange beaks, okay, and that's what we're painting. We're painting orange beaks, and that's what we're going to do now. We're going to paint this. And let me tell you, it takes a couple coats to get this, to get these beaks done, okay? So I'm going to do all the beaks at this point, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to do these three times to get that bright orange color, okay? Now again, I am not painting on the outside lines. I am just painting within the lines. So this is what it looks like. Okay. Next thing you're going to do is grab your bigger brush. It's already got a little bit of water in it. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to paint down here the bottom. Okay, I'm going to paint all this orange section down at the bottom. I'm just going to paint it orange, staying off the black lines. Beside the lines, but not on them. Okay. There we go, there's one. If you go off any of the lines, don't worry, you can take a... a a marker or a black pen will do it. Um, and then you can just remake your line. 
So there's the one I did, and you can still see my black lines. If you don't, if you if you go over the line, don't worry. Just take an ink pen and go right around them. Okay? So you're gonna paint those all orange. I'm gonna wash my brush again. Now let's pretend that I've done the black, all the black on the penguins, I've done the orange and the orange beaks. I'm now gonna take, I'm now gonna take, wash my brush, and again pull some water into the yellow, pull it again and turn it. Pull it again and turn it. Pull it again, load up your brush. I want it really thin because those eyes are very small. So I am going to do, whoop, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to be moving my brush because I've got some orange down there that I, moving the paper, because I've got some orange down there I don't want my arm in. Okay, believe it or not, we are almost done. We're now going to take, so you should have done your uh, eyes, the beaks, the feet down here are all orange, and all the black for the penguins. So the next color we're going to take is we're going to take the tan. We're going to use our bigger brush, and again we're going to put it into a little bit of water to get it rolling. Okay, and I'm painting I'm painting the two sides, here and here, with tan. Now I did something different. I painted this one a bold color tan, and this one I just watered it down a little just because I liked it. And that's what that looks like. Okay? Alright, so I will finish painting that just so that you can see that. Again, I'm not going over those black lines because we need to keep those lines because it outlines it. Alright? And when I paint, I try to do go over those lines as I put colors on so it doesn't look streaked. Okay? Again, I turn my paper, always turning this paper. Otherwise, you can't paint and not get your arm in it. And let me tell you how many times I have gotten my arm in a painting and ruined it. So there we go. Okay, so that's that. I'm just shaping up the the paint so that it all looks pretty even on this one. Okay, there's no streaks. I've gone way over to the edge, not touching the line. Not touching the line. I find this really relaxing. I love to paint. There. Okay, so that's what that one looks like. The next one, on the other side, you're going to take some water, pull that over, and make some, make a few puddles right in the paint. Okay, so I really watered that down. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you what I mean by a wet wash. Okay, see how light that is compared to the one next to it over here? I wanted just a lighter one over here and that's what I'm going to do. But I wanted, took a little bit of my paintbrush, added two paintbrushes full of water and that's how I got this lighter color. Okay, and that's what that one looks like. Okay, great. Okay, two things left. We're going to take our paintbrush and we're going to go into the blue and we're going to water that down like I did the tan and I'm going to make streaks across the top of my paper with blue. I like to go with a very light blue as you can see because I want it to feature my penguins. That's the most important thing. Okay? I also go light because if I make a mistake and I go over a penguin or I make a mistake, it doesn't show as much. So, I put the blue at the top, and I used a lot of water and I streaked it. And then down at the bottom, when it was more dry, I just put another wash, just like this one, across the bottom, just to give it some definition. Okay? And that's our emperor penguins. And I love this piece of art. I just couldn't wait. So, in your packet, you have a template. Mine's got stuff on it, but you've got a template to pay, paint on that's on cardstock, and that's going to make it easier for you. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed it so much, I'm going to paint another one. Thank you.